I'm going to review the Black Diamond Trail Trekking Poles. These poles are super nice for climbing, hiking, adventuring, going across streams. And I'm going to share with you some of the pluses and the minuses of these poles in this video. So these Black Diamond Trekking Poles are actually quite nice. They've got this flick lock design. Let me show you that. This is one of the things, and these are telescoping poles. Let me click it there. Click it there, there you go. These poles are great for travel because they shrink down. For a height, when they're shrunken down of, let's see, it's a 25 inches. It's about 25 inches, that's about 64 centimeters, give or take, if my math is right. So they compress all the way down. And then if you telescope them out, and you go all the way to the end, you can see these marks on here. And we're going to go to the end where they say stop. And theoretically, they can be up to 140 centimeters tall. So let's see if we can make that work. Okay, so theoretically 140 centimeters tall. Now that's tall. I mean, on me, that's way the heck up here. That's virtually at my shoulder. So 140 centimeters, 2.54 is 55 inches. Let's see if that's actually the case because you never know what these markings are on the pole, if they're real or whatever they are. And sure enough, 55 inches right there. So if you want to telescope these things way crazy tall, that is exactly where you're going to put it. However, I prefer to have these at about 115. Here I am six feet tall or 183 centimeters, 115. And that allows me, I'll show you right here, that allows me to have the pole to where my arm is 90 degrees if I'm traveling flat because what happens is I actually put the pole slightly behind me for extra thrust. How much do these poles actually give me? 10% improvement in speed. How do I know this? Because when I'm towing my tire for training, I maybe take, it maybe takes me an hour round trip, two round trips in my neighborhood to go down a hill and come back. But when I add the poles to the mix, it cuts my speed down to 55 minutes and I take the poles again and away and it takes an hour. So the poles for thrust give me an additional 10%. That doesn't sound like much, but when you're traveling 100 miles, consider that in 100 miles or 160 kilometers, that is 10 miles or 16 kilometers. I mean, for some people, 10 miles is a day or 16 kilometers is a day. So don't underestimate the speed advantage that these give. Now you can see here that they've got these very nice straps. They are spongy right here. And the way to use the straps is you put your wrist up through the pole and then you grab the pole like this, that way it can dangle at any time. And you can grab the pole and ideally, you're just holding it like a teacup. That way your wrist takes most of the load rather than gripping this bad boy. Now, these straps are also adjustable from the top strap. You can pull right here, shrink them down, and then it's a little bit harder to stretch it out, but if you lift up, it's actually quite easy to stretch these out. Now, how much can you actually put in these wrist straps? I mean, if I put it all the way down, that is way too small for me. But if I stretch this out, what can I actually fit in there? Well, here are my Black Diamond Revolution gloves that I use in Antarctica. You can see the duct tape there. And if I put these on and I put the idiot cord on here and I put my glove through here, I drop this in here that's just the right size, pretty much stretched to the limit. By the way, this has right and left markings, which is really nice. There is actually some asymmetry to the poles for the right and left handedness. Compare that to my old Lucky Trekking poles where they gave me white and black for the topper to tell me right and left. After 15 or 20 years, you really think I can remember which is which? No. 
So black diamond benefit there, very nice. But will these fit mittens? Mmm, that is the question. So I'm going to put my big old honking mittens on here. These are Outdoor Research Alti Mitts. And I put this mitten in here. Ah, uh, not really. I can't get my hand down. But remember, these things are 8,000 meter mittens or South Pole, North Pole mittens. So instead of trying to grip the pole, what you do is you put your hand on top of the pole. And then, of course, your hand's on top so it puts your arm a little bit higher. So all I do is drop this down to one ten centimeters when I'm especially going uphill. That is a very nice adjustment. And then the pole is pretty good for thrust here, but if I'm going up a really steep hill, I can drop these bad boys down to only a hundred centimeters, which is totally, totally comfortable. Now, if you get the pro version of these poles, you can actually take out the top and put a little uh, ice axe into this thing. This version of the pole, as much as I've been able to figure out, you can't pop it out because there's this pin in here that allows the straps to work. Now, the graphics on here, they come in black or red. Um, eh, I want red so I can see them in all of my other black gear. In theory, the foam here, this big extra length of foam is supposed to help for sweat and everything. Eh, I don't know, because some people, they, in, they improperly put their hand through the pole and then they grip like this. So when you drop the pole, it's kind of awkward instead of using the teacup maneuver. I don't actually know why they put this huge length of foam on here. It's six inches of extra foam or about 15 centimeters. Uh, eventually, I think I'm going to chop it off. Of course, that means I can't return it. Now, there are two versions of this trekking pole grips. One is cork. Now the people, the cork's a little bit more expensive, but a lot of people prefer cork because they don't get as sweaty compared to the foam. However, the foam is slightly more shock absorbent than the cork. The cork's pretty close to uh, mild plastic, but this foam cuts the vibration because when you're walking, burn, 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 there is a slight vibration in all aluminum and titanium trekking poles, which over hundreds and hundreds of miles, that vibration translated into your wrist bones and your fingers. Oh my gosh. Um, that, this is a personal preference. I can't recommend one versus the other. When I'm ultra sweaty, I am regretting getting foam like, oh, but when I'm hitting hard rocks or hiking where there's a lot of vibration, I'm loving foam. So the sweating is a little bit irritating for the foam, but I will trade that versus long-term in injury of my wrist bones and the carpal tunnel pathways and all the nerves in my hands. Now, these flick clocks are not easy to actuate. And that is actually a good thing because you don't want them just accidentally unclicking. Now you can see here there's a screw and I don't know if you can see inside, but there is blue Loctite thread locker in there and you can either use a flat head to adjust the tension on these lockers or a Phillips here so it's got the multi-mode screw so as these guys get loose and over time they will become loose you can just give them a little bit of a snugging and they will lock just fine now this trekking pole also comes with tungsten carbide tips and these tips are removable as you can see here there are these little kind of scallops if you will you can actually get a set of pliers grip the knurling here and take these off and replace them you can actually purchase rubber tips so you're not using carbide tips because these carbide tips are hard and if you're on a damageable surface the carbide will trash just about anything on this earth other than like diamonds. But if you've got a diamond pathway, you're probably rich and you don't really care. But this, so th that's a nice feature of being able to remove those tips. However, I have read some reviews where these tips have actually fallen off. I don't know how, but compare that say to my lucky trekking poles where they're non-removable. These things have lasted like 20 plus years. So, you know, what's that worth? But 
that removable feature is nice. Now, some people in their reviews complain that they cannot remove the basket here. Check this out, this basket is removable. Notice how it just free floats here, but you can see the threads. So what I'm gonna do is try and remove this, okay? And instead of trying to hold here, make sure your flick locks are super good and tight and then you can add a lot of torque and it's much easier to pull this off. Some people have had to revert to boiling their uh, snow baskets. These are called snow baskets. These are trail baskets and these are snow baskets. You, don't, you won't want to use the trail baskets if you can avoid it. I've always had these on here. I lost the, the uh, snow baskets years ago, but these seem to work pretty well in all but the softest of snow. To add this on here, all you do is begin twisting and it does become difficult. After you do it a few times, it totally becomes no problem. Let's see if I can twist this on here. Oh, ho! Oh, it's starting to slip already. <laughs> well, that's uh, kind of frustrating. So I'm gonna have to grip here and twist a little bit. There we go, twist, twist, twist. And as soon as they get all the way on, they actually free float. So there is, there is a possibility of these coming off and you can see just a little bit of plastic thread here tears apart. I don't believe I had them cross threaded, but you can see that these have a little bit of uh, tooth or teeth edging on here, but this snow basket is super wide. The width of the snow basket is, oh, about four inches. So that would be about 10 and a half centimeters, give or take. So this is a nice feature, but you can see if I'm cranking and twisting on these guys, depending on how tight I have that click lock click, it can still twist around. So if I crank this really hard down, maybe I didn't have it locked fully out. Let's see how that works. Okay. Eh, it's twisting. Okay, so I didn't have the flick lock all the way closed. Now that's a thing, this design is wrap around. So it's very difficult to snag, which is huge. Very difficult is good. Some other flick locks just have this little clasp that flips over and it is so easy to snag and open those things are very very irritating so let me undo this here all right now how much do these weigh that's a good question so i will show you with my handy dandy scale let me turn on my scale and we will check this out and i will put the regular bottoms on here Okay, let me weigh the poles with everything. Okay, and lock. Okie dokie. So these poles all together are one pound, 2.2 ounces, or 18 ounces, or 516 grams. Now compare that to my ultra, ultra light interlock lecky trekking poles these are still the cat's meow i love these poles because of how light they are all right hold these are a mere 15 ounces or 153 grams so uh or, or uh, sorry 436 grams so the difference between the interlock and the snap lock is uh, maybe three ounces or i don't know whatever is this 100 grams it's quite a bit but the problem is over time these twist locks wear out and when they push down hard or when it's freezing in snow they tend to sink i've ordered new parts but i've gotten 20 or i've gotten 20 plus years out of this so that's something to consider too but the nice part is most of the parts on here are replaceable and if it gets loose all you do is tighten this guy again and you're back in business. So all in all, I've been very happy with my Black Diamond trail poles. Just a bummer, I wish there was a way to make them lighter. There is the pro version of these where it has the slam, uh, slam 
<laughs> slam, snap locks, whatever it is, but some people reported getting their fingers pinched. I don't want anything more complex because if that mechanism stops working and I'm way in the field, what am I gonna do? But I can always use my multi-tool and screwdriver, tighten these bad boys up, and I can even use, maybe even use my uh, titanium spork to tighten that up. So these black diamond trail poles are super, super nice. The foam and sponginess compared to the foam and sponginess on my Leckies, they're pretty worn out, but they're still pretty soft. These guys are a little bit wider. Let me in fact show you the width here. All right, that is about an inch and a quarter. That's about three or four centimeters. So pretty good there. And what else do you need to know about that? Yeah, that's about it. So these black diamond trekking poles, highly recommended. Love them for snow trekking, uh, tire towing or adventuring. Plus the benefit of being able to fully squish these down to a size to where you can toss them in your luggage or your backpack for travel. Just remember TSA and airlines do not allow you to take trekking poles into the cabin with you. Uh, just a no-no because apparently you can use it as a weapon. And I'm sure you're gonna say, don't laugh about that. But there you go. These guys are super nice. Check out links below in the description to all the products, including the Black Diamond Trail hiking and trekking poles. My name is Aaron Lindstam. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links in the description to my books. Antarctic Tears, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, 50 Jackson Hole Photography Hotspots, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and my 2024 Total Eclipse Guide, as well as my show, Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more info like this.